So if that's the price quality spectrum, what do preferences look like? Well, in general, people prefer lower price and they prefer more quality. Now, the reason this is, remember last time when we did the demand curve, we had this like curve? Remember that price was price per unit. This is the total price you pay. So clearly your preference here is always lower price and given the price you're paying, you want more quality. If I had put price per unit quality on this axis, then we'd have that U-shape. But in this world, I'm going to think of my indifference curves looking like this. Now, I will tell you there's no reason these have to be concave, because I haven't defined the units of quality. But I'm just going to draw them concave, because that makes my life easy. And assume I've measured the quality space so that they are concave. I've just chosen my quality dimension, and everybody's indifference curves are concave. It's not going to matter. And I'll explain in a minute how it's going to, why, why it would, you know, what, where it, what we really need. But that's the quality, that's people's preferences. What's clear is they always prefer this way, right? They prefer lower prices, they want to pay less, and they want to get more, right? That's, that's easy. All right. Now, I'm going to have to, in order to talk about a market, I'm going to have to put in the supply side of the market. And I'm going to also have to think about how consumers make their decisions. And we're also going to have to think about what we mean by an equilibrium. So let's think about how we're going to describe consumer behavior. So the idea is, is the consumer is going to go down. He's got his preferences, Q and P. When he goes down to the store to buy his TV set, we're going to think about there being some kind of P of Q. Which is, the e which is the market price is a function of quality. And since everybody prefers more quality to less quality, this function is going to have to be upward sloping, right? If there were downward sloping segments, we could ignore them, right? Nobody's going to choose a point where they can get more quality at a lower price. So we might as well assume the equilibrium one is upward sloping because we're never going to be anybody located on the downward sloping part. We would never see the downward sloping parts. They would be missing from our data. And he's going to choose a point where his indifference curve is tangent to this price line from below, right? This is what I'm saying. If his indifference curve was convex, then the price line would have to be even more convex, right? So his indifference curve always has to be concave relative to the equilibrium price line. So if I change the units in which I'm measuring Q, like square it or take the square root or cube root or take logs or whatever, this curvature is going to move around, but this one's going to ha always have to be less concave. They could both be concave, they could both be convex, but the choice point is always going to be a point where this curve is concave relative to the price curve, okay? That's the idea, right? So he's going to choose the quality level that maximizes his utility subject to the price quality trade-off that exists in the market, okay? And if we looked at the slope, therefore, of the price quality trade-off, we could get a measure of his marginal willingness to pay for quality, right? That is, we would know how much this consumer is willing to pay to get a little bit better TV set by measuring the slope of this price quality trade-off, right? Right, he's buying that 50-inch TV. We know how much it costs to buy a little bigger one. We could figure out his marginal value of having a slightly bigger TV, okay? All right, any questions that people have, okay? 